Are you planning a wedding and are you finding that it's a bit more stressful than you feel like you signed up for? Today, I'm talking with Candida. She's a wedding planner with Bridal Bliss, and she's done a bunch of weddings as of I. And a big thing that I talk about is how couples can have a stress-free wedding, and I have some things to say about that. But today, we're talking about what Candida says to a couple when she almost initially hops on a call with them to, just to set expectations, to put things into perspective, and things that you can do to have that stress-free wedding. So here we go. So thanks, Craig. Um, my... First tip for a stress-free wedding is use a checklist. Um, most planners, I don't know if, if you're a planning type or whether you're not a planning type, you're going to get stuff done if you have it in a checklist. So, and luckily for the internet, there's you have access to tons of wedding checklists. I would prioritize looking for one that focuses on um, like priorities first, such as booking your major vendors. Um, if you've come to the point where you're picking a planner, you most likely already have a venue. If not, you need to find a venue first so you can get the date that you like. And then the checklist will have reminders to like book a photographer, a videographer, like mm -hmm. Craig, um, DJ band rentals, all those things. And then as the end, towards the end of the checklist, it'll have like the tiny details, like what shoes you're wearing and who's loaning you something for your something borrowed or whatever. But having that checklist in front of you where you can like tick things off as you do it, you'll feel such a sense of accomplishment and it'll help you to not feel so overwhelmed. My second tip for a stress-free wedding is to make it personal. Um, I know that we can get a lot of inspirations from magazines and Pinterest and the internet, TikTok and what have you, but I do find that the weddings that are more personal and have more personal touches are the ones that are more memorable. So um, some, a few examples to, of ways to make it personal is you can name your signature cocktails after your dogs and have like a little picture of them at the bar. That's a way for guests to get to know you on a more personal level. Um, at the welcome table, you can have, um, you can display family wedding photographs. So you can see how the fashion has changed throughout the generations. And it's just a way to tie in um, the importance of family at your event. And then another really cool way to make it personal is, you know, everyone has table numbers at their wedding, but you could also have a special place on each of the table numbers that um, have significance to the couple. So maybe places that you, the place that you met or where you went to school or your hometown or whatever. It's just a way for guests maybe of one half of the couple to learn about the other and vice versa. Yeah, it is interesting so, when people sit down at tables, they might not, they might know the bride, the other person might know the groom or vice versa. And I yeah. think I've seen that done where there are little stories, because even I enjoy that stuff, maybe where they got proposed to and a little bit, mm -hmm. a note about it, or maybe where they're going to honeymoon and why, or things like that. I find that stuff really enjoyable. It's also a really great icebreaker for the guests that are put at a table together that might not know each other. Um, to help draft up conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure. Great. Um, so my third tip uh, for a stress-free wedding is to be flexible and embrace the possibility of imperfections. Um, things will seem, there will be things that seem so important in the planning stages that in the grand scheme of things are actually quite small. For example, I just had a mom who, um, the couple is not doing a cake and they're mm -hmm. doing small little cookies instead, like three inch cookies. And she was worried that serving them on a cocktail napkin was going to look, you know, out of place. And her friends are saying, you got to get the plates. You got to get the plates. And it's really, I mean, you're serving them a cookie. It's not give them on a napkin. Don't stress about it. But there will mm -hmm. be things like that that couples will stress out about. And at the end of the day, it's just a cocktail napkin. There are so many other things that are more important. So um, if you, what my planner told me 17 years ago was that, as long as the two of you show up and there's someone there to marry you, that's really all that matters. Everything else is the icing on the cake. Um, and so if you expect and are okay with the idea and the potential of maybe a dozen things going wrong on your wedding day, you won't really be bothered when maybe one or two things don't turn out exactly as you had planned. So be flexible. So instead of assuming everything's going to be perfect and then freaking out when little things yeah. start going wrong, just assume, Hey, this isn't going to be perfect. There's weather. There's so many factors. Let's just assume 10 things will go wrong. And then when two go wrong, you're like, wow, that was great. And I know that as a planner, people might be like, oh my God, why is she saying that? But really it's just to give some levity to the situation because 
I mean, think about it, Craig. How many weddings have you worked where, oh my gosh. and maybe the couples don't even realize that there's been a crisis in the kitchen or, you know, someone's wedding, their, their bra strap, whatever. Like, the list goes the on. The, the list day. goes on with every single vendor. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I had a bride who literally the strap on her vintage gown broke seconds before she was supposed to walk down the aisle. So leave it. This is why you have a planner who has an emergency kit. We got a safety pin. It was fine. And out of all the things that happened on that day, she doesn't remember that her strap broke. Like it'll be, it'll be something funny to look back on. Be flexible. Don't, don't stress out. One way I look at planners is that stuff is going to go wrong and they are the wall that that thing has to go through for it to even make it to the couple. And most things will never make it through the planner, meaning things will go wrong. You, me, a professional wedding team will deal with it and the couple will never know about it. And nobody's the wiser. Totally. So don't stress. Perfect. Um, We're here to help. (laughs) Okay. So kind of piggybacking off what you just said, um, my Tip number four is hire a great vendor team and trust them throughout the process. Um, The planner serves as the conductor of the day. We are there to just kind of make sure that all the vendors um, know what's expected of them in order for them to do their job the way that the couple wants. We're there to make sure they have everything they need um, and that we all work in tandem to create a beautiful day. So um, I think you should hire vendors that make you feel excited about your day instead of feeling overwhelmed. And also, um, once you start picking those vendors one by one, you can ask them for recommendations um, for other vendors and different categories that match your style and your energy. Vendors really are your best resource. And um, we work a lot of weddings together. We make a lot of really great connections. And it's just use us as your resource. We'll help. Yeah. There's a photography team that I've worked with down in Colorado or down in Mexico. And we're working another wedding coming up in Colorado. But as a videographer, something I look at is that your photo and video team are going to work so closely. It's like a dance the whole day. Um, and what's, what's unique is certain photographers have different styles. Um, some are a little more aggressive and, and some are a little more fly on the wall and making sure that your photo and video team have similar approaches so that they're not stepping on each other's toes is something to consider too. And there's just, I mean, you could probably go on and speak about, yeah, putting a, putting together a team is very interesting because you're putting together a bunch of different people and saying, Hey, play as a team and make this whole day go smooth. Right. And that, that goes kind of back to my tip number four about being flexible, because I mean, I've worked a bunch of weddings where they have followed the timeline to a T, no problem. But then there's other where others where you need to be a little more flexible. You want to get those golden hour photos, like let's push the toast back a few minutes. Is the DJ going to be okay with that? Is the DJ mm-hmm. going to pay any attention to you or is he going to keep playing music? Like you, you want to hire um, good communicators from your vendors and, um, and hiring a good planner will help kind of conduct all of that and manage those expectations ahead of time. So everyone come the wedding day, everyone knows it's expected of them and we can make it happen. Yeah. On a wedding day, I and me and the photographer are always looking to the planner because they're the ultimate coordinator of all the little, (laughs) what's the guy in the symphony who leads up front? Yeah. He's the conductor. The conductor. Thank you. Yeah. Right? Like she, you are the conductor. Like when the ceremony starts, it's you're in the back pointing at everybody or when speeches are going or yeah, there's so many things that are happening in so many moving parts. Um, yeah. what was that? Was that five or four? That was four. I have one more. Four, great. Final one. Okay. So my final tip for a stress-free wedding, um, and sometimes the mother of the bride or the mother of the groom will be against this. That's Okay. I'm do so, something I'm for so yourself. <laughs> do something for yourself um, in the morning before your wedding day. So whether it's a cup of coffee just by yourself, maybe you're journaling, listening to your favorite music, whether it's a 20-minute yoga session or taking a small, a quick walk or eating a really big healthy breakfast, just do something for you and give yourself like 15 or 20 minutes of just time to process what's going to happen that day because once you step foot in or put your bottom in that hair and makeup chair, <laughs> it starts <laughs> like it's on or for the guys, like, um, I'm not saying go do a round of golf because for some reason, all of my grooms want to do that this year, but maybe do a workout with your buddies at the hotel gym, 
and go get some brunch. Just do something to kind of get yourself square for the day. Hmm. And um, because then it's going to be a whirlwind and you're just, you're going to really appreciate having that time, whatever, whatever it is that you need to do to clear your head and kind of get your, your energy ready for the day, do it. And I so will guys, <laughs> guys, if you want to golf, just go to Waverly and golf your way out all the way to the prep house in the middle of the, in the middle of the holes. Totally. I have a bride getting married next year up in the Seattle area. And it's funny cause we talked about this. The bride is dead set on yoga, coffee, mm-hmm. sunrise, like morning I mean, on the deck. And the guys are heading out to the ocean to catch fish because they don't need that much time to prep. But okay. he's he's big into fishing, and she's like, I just want that time, and that's, like, top priority for her. You know, I, I just worked with a couple who um, the bride is a major player at her job, and she had a really stressful week the, the, mm-hmm. the week leading up before her wedding. And um, she just said, I just need to go for a run in the morning. And I said, you got to do it. So the like morning of the wedding before makeup the started. The morning of the, before, like she woke up at the crack of dawn and she went yeah. for like a 20 minute run and just cleared her head. And she was in such a good space for the whole remainder of the day. So do what you got to do for you. Yeah. That's tip number five. Well, that was perfect. That wraps it up with five (laughs) tips. If you're watching this, uh, me and Candida did two other videos. I'll post them at the end of this video. We did one on her favorite venues currently as of today. And we did another one just interviewing her, getting to know her more. Again, she works for Bridal Bliss and you can go to Bridal Bliss, inquire. And if you're like, hey, I really like Candida, just type that into the notes. And if she's available, I'm sure you will talk with her. So hopefully this was helpful as you guys are going through the process and figuring out like, how do I need to structure my days? so that things can go smoothly and things can be stress-free. Thanks so much, Candida. Thanks, Craig. This was fun.